Hi folks, Haas DT2. We bought one about six months ago. I wanna walk through why we bought it, what we're doing with it, what we really like about it, what are some things you should keep in mind that may be different about this machine, and just give a general overview of it. So, it is actually not our first kind of drill tap 30 taper machine. We had bought a used robo drill, um, and that wasn't a good fit for us because we wanted probing, we wanted through spindle coolant, uh, and frankly, we wanted the compatibility of having the same control and code on the machine. So we sold that robo drill, we bought this machine, and we wanted to see how it can help us mostly increase our cycle times and efficiency here. When they say these machines are fast, they are fast. It is 28 inches in X travel, 16 in Y, 15 and a half in Z, although there's a big asterisk for that I'll come back to. It's a 30 taper machine, 12,000 RPM spindle. It has a 20 tool, uh, tool changer on the side there, which is also very fast. 1.6 second chip to chip tool change time. We bought ours with the 300 PSI through spindle coolant. Uh, the probing, of course, we bought the auger option, which we really do like. We are using this for production. You absolutely got to think about chip control. We also really like these rubber bristle brushes. We have them on most of our machines now. They're the perfect tool for being able to push chips around without getting them stuck in the bristles. And we use these inexpensive stick-on broom style mounts. This helps keep the brushes off the floor and means we always know where they are. And the through air blast. It will do 2,400 inch rapids and 1,200 inches in the cut. I don't know that we ever really get that fast, but what we do care about is it will tap at 5,000 RPMs. So the reason the tapping speed saves us so much time is we're in the business of making fixture plates and accessories related to fixture plates. Uh, we've got our soft jaw fixture on there right now, which doesn't do that much tapping, but we're making a lot of plates like here. This I think is our hobby universal plate. Uh, it goes on like a machine like a Sureline or a Tag and there's just simply a lot of holes that are drilled and tapped and that is really saving a lot of time the ability to tap at that speed is amazing but also just simply the ramp up and ramp down is incredible 5,000 forward stop it stops so quick what made us actually pull the trigger on this machine was when we were up at area 419 earlier this year um, awesome shop tour awesome story uh really look up to john he's a very successful entrepreneur and we were kind of laughing because they've got some awesome machines in their shop now and they have these dts and they are just crushing it with them uh, they've got most of them set up with a fourth axis and they are truly making a ton of parts and that's what i love about this is it is a great machine for the footprint and for the price I also love that it's easy to move around. It's easy to rig, it was easy to get installed, and uh, easy to pallet jack around if you needed to. You do uh, want to bolt the machine down. Their rapids can be so fast that they can literally walk across the floor, so uh, you do want to have it anchored down. Um, a couple other kind of quirks, you don't have a functional side window. Um, not a huge deal from us from a machining standpoint, but we do miss it because it makes it easier to do some maintenance or cleaning out. You really get some chips built up in there. But the other thing that's a big kind of surprise if you're new to a drill tap machine, uh, and I believe it's pretty common on all the different brands, is you've got a higher spindle nose to table minimum distance. So I mentioned earlier in the video, there's only 15 and a half inches of Z, but they've also shifted that Z up a little bit. So if you jog the spindle all the way down, you can see that six inch distance, which is the top of the table, the underside of the fixture plate for us, and the spindle nose, which is you know about right there. So honestly, it's normally not an issue. Uh, we're running a fixture plate here, which is just under one inch thick. Uh, we've got a, some of our aluminum plates that act as a riser, and then this is our soft jaw fixture. We actually probably don't even need those three risers right now, but we've used them because we've got some different products. Um, so long as your tool length is, is decent, um, you're gonna reach it, or if you're using a traditional vise, those vices have a couple inches of thickness anyways to them, plus your parts usually on top of that. So not a huge deal, but it does catch some folks by surprise, especially if you're doing thin parts and you're trying to lay flat on the table, or in our case, like a fixture plate. You actually want that higher uh, spindle to table distance if you're gonna run a fourth axis on these machines because your center line is up a little bit higher, so you want access higher up on the machine. And again, that is a great setup. If you're trying to crank out some parts, a quick change system to load and unload fourth axis tombstones uh, to get access to all four sides of parts, higher part density, really awesome. So how does it compare to a VF2? Well, if it's gonna be your only machine that you can only have one of, 
generally speaking, a VF2 is a better choice. It's more versatile and all else equal, a 40 taper machine is better than a 30 taper machine. It's a larger spindle taper, more surface area to have contact and rigidity, but they make this in a DM version, which is a identical machine except 40 taper. I have heard a rumor that the only reason that they offer that is to appease folks that only want to run 40 taper tooling and that otherwise, frankly, the machine isn't really benefiting from that larger spindle taper. In other words, this is built for a 30 taper uh, in terms of rigidity standpoint, and I think it's about 10 grand more to step up to a 40 taper. So that's a lot of tooling, um, especially if it's not really meant for that larger spindle taper. But here's the thing that I gotta wonder about. If I recall, it's the cubic power to accelerate something. So there's a lot of uh, weight difference between a 30 taper and a 40 taper tool not only in the tool itself, but in the spindle uh, in the spindle taper. So you've got to use a ton more power to come close to being able to accelerate and decelerate at the same speed as this. Um, and that's, to me, again, a huge part of why this machine is so fast. The uh, folks at Area 419 have a really cool way of programming their parts. They keep standardized tooling uh, across their Haas machines, which literally lets them run the same part on a VF2 or on a DT2. And they took a program, it was one of their fourth axis parts, uh, uh, that was running 48 minutes, this is for a bunch of parts. Uh, that same 48 minute program on a VF2, pretty sure it was an SS, stepped down to 32 minutes on a DT2. That's incredible. Uh, we heard that before we bought our machine. We took one of the fixture plate products that we make on our VF2, that was at 18 minutes, it went down to 10 minutes here. Now. You're gonna only get that kind of savings if you've got a bunch of tap holes, a bunch of drilled holes, a bunch of tool changes, but nevertheless, that's huge, and these things are fast. The other two kind of limitations uh, only have a 250 pound table limit. I believe that has a lot more to do with the rapids than it does anything else, but noteworthy. Uh, and you can only run two inch tools. I forget if there's a large tool option, but you're gonna be limited on your tool length and diameter. I've seen no material issues in terms of quality of parts, tolerancing, and so forth. Like, it's been great for us with what we're doing. Again, it's great on the service finishes that we're running on our products here, whether it's things like these soft gels or even the smaller fixture plates that we make. But that's the other way I try to push myself outside of my comfort zone is if you had to grow or scale up, somebody, you know, you went to work for somewhere and they said, hey, you have a budget of X, we need you to have eight spindles or 12 spindles. Um, would I buy more of these? Absolutely. But as always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. If you have questions on the machine, throw them in the comments below. We will be happy to respond or chime in. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.